hello everyone welcome back on the another video on dsp processor uh, in this presentation in this video we are going to learn about the sine pwm in the previous lecture we have learned about the sine pwm with the adc and the epwm module and in this video we are going to learn about the sine pwm without the adc so before uh, starting the video if you haven't subscribed my channel please go and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for the latest update so now we'll start with the presentations uh, and start with the video so for the sine pwm what we need we need the sine wave so we are taking the sine wave and we and the, uh, the amplitude of a sine wave we are considering as one and the frequency we are considering at a 50 hertz so it will be 2 pi into 50 and the sampling time which we are considering is 5 ek power minus 5 okay so now uh, this sine wave has a magnitude is minus one to one so we want to make an offset of uh, one so we are considering the sine wave is one zero to two so we are adding the offset into the sine wave uh, so by adding the offset in the sine wave uh, is we are adding one so the output will be uh, zero to two now the sine wave uh, we want the sine wave between 0 to 1 so we are multiplying its magnitude by half so we are keeping the magnitude as half so now uh, the next thing to this sine wave uh, we want to generate the pwm pulses by comparing the triangular waveform so we need the epwm modules so here uh, uh, i am using the dsp uh, 28335 so 28335 comes under the c28336x uh, so uh, i have added the epwm modules to generate the pwm pulses uh, for the sine pwm so now we will click on the epwm modules and this kind of interface you will see so here uh, you will see that c280x8 and c2833x epwm so this kind of interface you will see while double clicking on the epwm modules so this general window will allow you to use the different epwm modules so we have a 16 epwm modules so we can use any one of the epwm modules epwm modules for our experimental purpose so here i'm using the epwm3 and the time period units we can specify by uh, in the form of seconds and in the form of clock cycles uh, and uh, specify specify timer period via either you can specify timer period here and this is the tbprd value it will decide your switching frequency it will decide your frequency of the uh, counter so uh, i'm considering uh, 36500 okay. Uh, okay so i'm considering 35000 uh, as a time period and uh, the counting mode you can select the up counting mode down counting mode and up and down counting mode so i'm considering the up counting mode you can select the up count up down count and down counting modes and this uh, for time based pay, uh, time based clock period and uh, high speed clock period, period you can uh, select based based upon the tbct and high speed clock t scalar you can decide your time period so the random value i have chosen here uh, so uh, so here uh, I'm selecting 37,500 uh, to generate the two kilohertz uh, uh, switching frequency to to for to generate the two kilohertz uh, time period. So this is the general setting for uh, EPWM we have to do. Now we are going for the EPWM 1A. So EPWM 3A. So the components compare A units we are doing comparing at every clock cycles and uh, specify a compare via either you can specify compare via your input port and uh, or if you want to do the comparison at a fixed width so here we are we have we have an input that is a sine wave so we want to compare with the uh, input port when you are giving the input port and when you apply you can see there another symbols will come here so you can connect your input uh, that need to be compared uh, that need to be compared to your epwm modules so now the initial compare value you can keep as any value between 0 to tbprd value so i am um, considering 
15,000 as the initial value. Uh, you can keep any value between 0 to uh, uh, TBPRD. Now, these registers are important part of the TBPRD. Like this will decide when you have to turn on your pulses and when you have to turn off your pulses. So before understanding this, we will go to the, uh, we will we'll learn the concept of this. So let us consider we have uh, this kind of triangular wave and uh, uh, we have uh, this compare unit, right? So, so this is the uh, counter this is in counting up mode and uh, this is the zero value and this value will decide your TBPRD value so when the counter is at zero what kind of pulses you need you need a pulses to be high right and up to when you need pulses to be high when the counter will reach to the uh, your compare a value so up to this value okay so your uh, when you reach at the counter uh, equals to uh, your period value you need to clear your uh, output right and uh, again uh, th uh, this will come when your counter is at when your tip counter will reach the tbprd value you have to do nothing so the same concept we are going to apply here so uh, what kind of actions we have to take when the counter equals to zero so when the counter equals to zero we have to set your uh, uh, output and when your counter will equal to, when your counter will reach to the period uh, when your counter will reach to this point what kind of actions you need to keep you need to keep do nothing because we are not taking any action here we are taking the actions during counting up mode so when you uh, when you are counting up mode and uh, when counter will reach your counting up mode so what kind of action you have to take you have to clear your pwm signals and the remaining signals you have to do nothing okay now we are going to apply these signals So after doing all the settings, we are not going to use the EPWM B pins. So we are only using the EPWM 3A pins. So after going through all the settings, these are the simple settings we have to do with each, uh, in this interfacing. So after clicking, we can make it okay. And we just connect these pins to this pin. Now the thing is our, uh, the output of this, uh, output of this part is uh, zero to one but the time period uh, TBPRD value is 37,500. So we have to multiply uh, this output with the TBPRD value. So what we are going to do, we are just multiplying the, this period with the 37,500. So when it will be zero, uh, when it will be one, your output will be one, it will be 37,500. So it will be compared with this, uh, at, uh, it will be compared with this value and it will give the uh, PWM parts accordingly. So now we will uh, go for another setting. So before going, we need a power GUI block. And uh, we have to go to configure system parameters. Here you keep, we have to keep the fixed state. And I'm keeping a Beka Gish champion setting. And here I'm keeping 5 AK power minus 5 as the fixed step size sampling type. And other thing we have to go to hardware implementations. In the hardware implementation, I'm using the uh, Delphi Note 2833X and according to your uh, board setting you can choose your board uh, respectively so I'm using TI Delphi Note 2833X so I just click on this one it automatically take the Texas Instruments CT, C2000 processor and go click on the apply button so now the next setting is uh, our uh, this uh, block has been built now uh, what we're going to do we just click on deploy to the hardware so here two options are deploy to the hardware embedded code quick start so this will provide a different facility when you are going to deploy to the hardware uh, it will uh, you have to open your code composite studio and there you have to build and debug all these uh, things but when you are embedded coder quick start uh, your processor your board should support this kind of thing so i am what i do usually do i do the deploy to the hardware so this code will automatically generate it in the uh, uh, embedded C language embedded C language and uh, when you are going to this code is converting into the embedded C language so this window will diagnostic viewer in the diagnostic viewer you can see so this kind of window will come so it will give, it will give the dis different reports of your system so I'll make it okay and I just uh, scroll up to the project 
and here the link is there open project in the code composer studio so i just click on this and it will take some time to open the project so i have already opened the ccs so i'll restart this project so it will take a few seconds to uh, restart your code composer studio if you have properly installed the code composer studio so i have a code composer studio version 8 with this so when i click on this untitled file so it will give the active debug states and go to the debug, debug probe to debug your uh, program whether it is properly converted or not so here in this window it was uh, it will give the build finish after successfully completion your building now when you're clicking on debug uh, debug as code composers debug section when you click on this this kind of window will come this kind of window will come then you have to select your target configurations okay so when i clicking on this yes button uh, it will ask about new target configurations so i'll just finish it and it will ask about what kind of connections you have made so i have connected my dsp board with the uh, xts 100 version 3 usb debug probe and the processor which i have used tma 320f28335 so based upon uh, your processor requirement you can select your processor and uh, you can save these connections and again you can go to the debug sections and uh, when i'm clicking on this uh, resume button our code will start executing in the uh, dsp and we will see the waveform how it would looks like so this is our uh, pwm pulses uh, you can see and uh, we can you can see our frequency is uh, 2 kilohertz you can see here and the which frequency which we have given this is the exact sine wave uh, sine pwm uh, okay so uh, this code will generate this code will gives you a exact sign pwm uh, now you can generate your pwm strategy uh, by following this video and if you like if you uh, like this video please share and subscribe my channel thank you thank you very much